Ah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay. Let us begin with uh, metta meditation. be happy and secure may all, all beings, beings have, have happy minds, minds. whatever living, living beings there may be without exception weak or strong long, long large medium short subtle or gross visible, visible or invisible living near or far born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds let no one deceive another nor despise anyone anywhere Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, Lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed position, removing desires for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought in mind, let us begin our meditation. Metta is the foundation of uh, developing our mind. This is called metta among various uh, benefits of metta. One is called ceto vimutti, mind liberating, mind liberate from hatred. And therefore, it is a very great relief uh, when we practice metta. We can remain always relaxed, peaceful, without uh, resentment, anger, and so forth. Therefore, we begin with metta for this practice. Everything we do is helping us to live every day in peace and harmony. We don't have to wait too long to experience peace. Uh, We must do it every day. We must experience peace. So let us practice this meditation aiming at gaining peace. Pay attention to the breath. Undivided attention wholehearted attention and notice inhaling and exhaling. When we inhale, the first touch of breath is at the rims of our nostrils and then we notice the expansion of our lower abdominal area and then our upper chest area. As we breathe out, lower abdominal area, chest area contracts, leaves our nostrils. This happens very naturally. As we breathe out, we notice again this contraction and when we breathe out, we experience this expansion. Also, there are two brief pauses when one, when inhaling completes one pause, when exhaling completes another pause. And they also happen very naturally. And then we feel the breath, we perceive the breath, we have thought of it, We have awareness or consciousness. 
they change as we breathe in, also they do change as we breathe out. None of them stay the same anytime, always changing. When we notice this reality, when we notice this reality, our breath becomes relaxed, the body relaxes, the mind relaxes, that also another way of gaining peace, experiencing peace, relaxing. As a result, also, we know that we cannot hold on to anything because they appear and disappear, constantly appear and disappear, appear and disappear. When they appear, we don't try to hold on to them. When they disappear, we don't go after them and understand that that is the nature. Let them come, let them go. Just be aware of it. And then our greedy thought will slowly fade away. And then as the body, mind, breath, all relax, begin to experience a degree of peace, feeling of metta takes root in our mind. We begin to feel metta. We begin to feel that we are one with all other beings, not different from them. That is the nature of metta, the friendliness. Then our resentment, uptightness, rigidity fades away. And then we also begin to remember the purpose of this practice that we started particularly uh, about three months ago or longer. Uh, that is for suffering beings. When, we, when the thought of suffering beings or memory of suffering beings arises in our mind, compassion arises along with that seeing and hearing and knowing suffering beings, compassion arises. And then our restlessness and worry fades away. And then the mind becomes even more gently active, seeing the truth and reality. Our sleepiness and drowsiness fades away. Seeing all this as a result of our practice, whatever doubt we had about the practice, about the Dhamma, about the Buddha, about our own practice, that doubt slowly fades away. As doubt fades away, confidence arises. When confidence arises, that brings us joy, and then that leads to happiness. That naturally leads to concentration. When this happens, the mind gains concentration of impermanence. It is very interesting moment. Since there is nothing for the mind to hold on to, Nothing to reject, nothing to accept. Things are changing. That is a very special moment for the mind to remain lodged, anchored on this impermanent nature. There we gain concentration. That impermanent nature becomes an object of our mindfulness, our concentration object of a focus, impermanence, <clears throat> then we gain concentration on impermanence. And then we begin to see as the concentration develops, 
we begin to see even deeper changes, subtlest changes taking place in our breath, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. Whatever we experience, sometimes sounds, thoughts, memories, they all appear and disappear. We have to remain very alert, mindful, just to be aware of this reality. With this, let us con May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So to may all beings be. With this metta wish, let us uh, focus our mind on the answers that I give to your questions. I think uh, Brian reads the questions and I will answer them. <clears throat> Dear Bhante Ji, thank you so much for all the wisdom that you are sharing with us. We are very fortunate indeed to have access to your Dhamma talks on Zoom and YouTube. Question, is the following investigation of the Dhamma. When I was meditating, a thought came to me. This is the day, uh, this is on the As Asala full moon, she was meditating. A thought came to me, is this the day in which the Buddha visited Varanasi? Then that triggered a memory of the temple at Varanasi. Then the dana I had participated in when I was there, then how I could offer Donna again and so on and ended up with thoughts about going there, how I would go, uh, how I would go and so on. When I realized I was away in my thoughts, I brought, my, brought back my attention to my sitting and breathing. Does investigation of the Dhamma mean tracing back the thoughts? Uh, what I realized was that one thought kept triggering another. Do we reflect at the time we realize our thoughts are not on the meditation? Uh, for example, go back to find out how we got there or continue with the object of meditation. Right. Investigation uh, of Dhamma must uh, open a little window in our mind to see the truth. Uh, simply tracing your thoughts to uh, to the original origin of it uh, itself is not going to uh, make you understand the truth. The investigation of Dhamma, as we know, as I explained, is one of the factors of enlightenment. Enlightenment is the state where we liberate ourselves from all psychic irritants, greed, hatred, delusion, and so on. Now, by tracing the mind back to the beginning of certain incident, uh, you may remember uh, certain things that is sometimes called sati, the memory. Uh, that alone 
it is not going to open the mind to see the truth or reality. With regard to SLA, uh, I want to, since you mentioned this is SLA, I want to mention some, uh, these are uh, historically important. This is not investigation of Dhamma. But uh, since you mentioned the word Asala, the name of this full moon, uh, I want to mention the things that uh, uh, that happened on this uh, full moon day. Number one, uh, this is the full moon day when that the Buddha delivered his first sermon, Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, in uh, Benares. And uh, also, this is the full moon that uh, Bodhisattva, Buddha to be, conceived in his mother's womb. And uh, this also is the full moon that first Vasa was observed. Vasa means rainy season, as most of the Theravada uh, monks and nuns do even today. Uh, they make a commitment to stay in one place for three months. The Buddha, after delivering first sermon, uh, and uh, when he had uh, uh, five uh, months along with him, uh, observed the three months was uh, on this day. Then uh, it is also recorded that it is on this full moon day that the Siddha, the gods, both, both that uh, renounced the household or family life. And uh, uh, also, this was the full moon when uh, Rahul, uh, Siddha, the Gautama's uh, uh, son, was born. And uh, it is also recorded that this was the full moon that Buddha delivered uh, uh, Abhidhamma uh, in uh, uh, Tusit heaven, Tavat in heaven. Uh, and Buddha, uh, after Buddha's passing away, uh, three months after his passing away, uh, the 500 monks uh, assembled in a place called Satpani Cave in India and uh, had, the, had the first Buddhist council where they uh, checked the Dhamma Vinaya, uh, the code of discipline and the Dhamma. Uh, then, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, when Buddhism was introduced to Sri Lanka, Vendabal Arit received his uh, ordination for the first time in Sri Lanka. Uh, then, Arahant, uh, 62 Arahants, all together, along with this uh, Venerable Arita, observed their first was uh, uh, on this uh, uh, on this day, Sri Lanka. Then, in there is a very big pagoda in Sri Lanka called Sonamali. Now, in Singhal, it's called Ruang Valley. Sai, Sai means pagoda, coming from the word Chetia. Uh, that uh, pagoda, that uh, stupa, was uh, built 
on completed on this day and uh, enshrined relics on this day and then another very important uh, event took place on this day which still is uh, in if uh, in uh, action or in uh, practice that is the world's most famous pageant called dalada perahar the procession that that uh, is going on streets in uh, honoring respecting the tooth relics in candy all these events took place on this full moon day and therefore very this is very special uh, full moon day uh, for especially uh, theravada buddhists uh, consider all the significance on of this uh, full moon day and uh, your question uh, now i come back to your question the investigation of dhamma i gave many things uh, to explain uh, many points i brought out to explain the meaning of investigation of dhamma i think the, the other day i said uh, first uh, we have to listen to dhamma and then we must remember dhamma then once we have memorized the dhamma we very frequently must look at the meaning of this dhamma look at the word uh, artha the meaning of these words then uh, when you uh, that way when you investigate the dhamma in this way examining the meaning questioning yourself or questioning others having the even discussion with others you slowly slowly as i mentioned earlier your uh, window in your mind opens to see the dhamma the truth dhamma means the truth uh, among many other meanings the basic meaning of dhamma is the truth uh, so uh, when you uh, open the mind to see the truth you are not only the body buddha said the uh, kayo pasambhati uh, when the when we investigate dhamma examine the dhamma even the body bodily we feel the joy pleasure happiness sometimes it is called dhamma kaya na pasati in pali the dhamma kaya na pasati see the dhamma uh, through the body what kind of dhamma we can see through the body we can see impermanence we can see unsatisfactoriness we can see selflessness only in this body and mind and also in other words in this five aggregates of which we are made form feeling perception thought and consciousness this what we call aggregates and uh, when we investigate dhamma of course dhamma is not something outside it is us we are the dhamma uh, body feeling and so forth are the, the work of dhamma and there we can see uh, impermanence and then we begin to see very great truth in it imbibed in the truth in the dhamma is imbibed in the in the in the body and then uh, pity joy arises that leads to happiness when we gain happiness uh, the mind becomes concentrated we repeat it in many times sukino chittam samadhiyati the concent the mind of the one who is happy gains concentration then when we see when we gain concentration that concentrated mind can see the truth exactly as it is it is just like a laser beam or 
when you want uh, it is just like a, a magnifying glass uh, when you want to see uh, you take for instance a drop of blood and put under very powerful microscope and with very clear eye look through the micros- microscope then you can see almost everything in that drop of blood very very clearly uh similarly when we gain concentration as i mentioned concentration is not making you like a vegetable or rock just stay stone like a stone no when you gain concentration that concentrated mind is the state that where where you you uh, uh, notice the deepest subtlest changes taking place in your body feeling and so forth just like a uh, scientist would look through the powerful microscope to see the uh, uh, characters compositions uh, properties of a uh, blood cell uh, only when he focuses his mind very very directly when we gain concentration that kind of awareness arises in us that is why i say it opens the window of our mind to see the truth exactly as it is then only uh, we have what you call nibbida nibbida means disenchantment uh, we start with investigating dhamma as the mind opens slowly 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 very clearly mind becomes sharper and sharper and sharper cleaner and cleaner and cleaner then all our greed our hatred our delusion all slowly fade away especially greed because of our greed we cling to things and when we see the reality there is nothing for us to cling to things are always in a state of flux changing 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 then arises very powerful insight uh, it is not called insight but it is uh, it is an insight because it is called nibbida disenchantment we think uh, the, at that moment uh, insight arises in us and uh, that insight tells us is this the thing that you have been holding on to all these years what is there to hold on to this is just an empty uh, events actions uh, nothing there for you to hold on to so your previous uh, attachment become uh, meaningless that is called disenchant you previously you were enchanted by the form the skin eyes ears nose and so forth of somebody or Uh, in ye- yourself and so forth when you see the truth you ask yourself is there anything for me to hold on to grab keep uh, and to say this is mine uh, this belongs to me this is i this is myself uh, there's nothing that insight is called nibbida nibbida generally this is not how it is translated into uh, some languages uh, it is difficult even in english to explain it in in, the, in a way that everybody can understand then when that disenchantment arises uh, there arises a moment called uh, virag not a moment but the insight arises virag viraga means discoloring uh, not uh, holding uh, raga is another name for craving uh, or desire uh, this is called dispassion in english dispassion you first have uh, uh, this you became disenchanted then next moment or next step is uh, dispassion when this passion arises that is called viraga when viraga arises what happens is ne- uh, the vimutti uh, vimut 
mukti means liberation. So the the when we investigate Dhamma, that uh, investigation must end or blossom bear the fruit of liberation. Investigation ends up in liberation. That is why it is called factor of enlightenment. A factor of enlightenment, just like other factors. Uh, therefore, it is very powerful. So, what you mentioned in your question, in reality, is uh, not uh, uh, real investigation, but that is the uh, recollecting your activities, uh, wholesome things, and uh, that, of course, is uh, uh, something that uh, we want to cultivate. That means we think of the place where the Buddha delivered the first sermon and uh, the, the temple is built there and that arouses our uh, devotional feelings and uh, uh, we feel very happy about it and you want to cultivate that happiness and so forth. That is also kind of investigation in a very uh, superficial way. Uh, that eventually may encourage you to uh, investigate more deeply into the Dhamma and uh, uh, perhaps end up in uh, attaining liberation as a result of this, build through the uh, cultivation of it for a long period of time. Finally, you can attain that state. Okay, next question. Thank you, Bhante. <coughs> Bhante, in the Nagita Sutta, the Buddha said, For one who dwells contemplating impermanence in the six bases for contact, revulsion towards contact becomes established. This is its outcome. Can you please elaborate on this practice involving the six bases? Six bases are six sense bases. I see as no strong body and mind. Uh, when you contemplate the uh, uh, impermanence of them, <laughs> you are contemplating impermanence of everything. In uh, Sanguti Nikaya, uh, when Buddha explained uh, uh, all, uh, there he said, because I will tell you all. I will explain all. What is all? Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Why he called uh, them all? <clears throat> These are the six bases or six senses that uh, uh, open us to the rest of the world outside. Our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Uh, and eyes, ears, tongue, body, and mind are not permanent. There's a very beautiful discourse in also Sanyutta Nikaya that is called Anicca Sanya Sutta. I think I mentioned this sutta several times and also mentioned its contents. Anicca Sanya means a perception of impermanence. Perception of impermanence, perception means experiencing, seeing, uh, is, is, uh, the something. Now here, when we perceive impermanence, friends, I mention in my instruction every day, what we see in our meditation practice is nothing but impermanence. When we, whatever we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and think are all impermanent, as well as the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind also are impermanent. So, uh, whatever we experience in life is impermanent. And Buddha said in Anicca uh, Sanya Sutta, if one develops, imp uh, meditates on impermanent, meditation, the perception of impermanence, experience impermanence, 
see impermanence, that person uh, then all the karma raga will disappear. Sabbam karma ragam pariyadiyati. All sensual pleasure, or desire for sensual pleasure, completely vanish. Of course, it doesn't happen all of a sudden, but that is exactly what will happen. O sabbam kama ragam pariyadiyati. Sabbam rupa ragam pariyadiyati. All desires for fine material existence will vanish. Sabbam arupa ragam pariyadiyati. All desires for non-material or immaterial existence will disappear. Then, all sabbam bhavaragam pariyadiyati. All uh, desires for continuous existence in samsara will vanish. Sabbam uh, asmi asmiti pariyadiyati samuhananti. Amu is called asmi mahana. This conceit will disappear only when you attain full enlightenment. Uh, even that will disappear by seeing impermanence. And then Buddha gave many similes, ten similes. Uh, one simile is just like a plowman with a big white plowshare. Plow the land and all the uh, weed Everything will be ploughed and the, the land become free from uh, weed. And um, it, he said uh, uh, when uh, the last one is the most uh, uh, important, I would like to repeat it again and again. That is when the sun in the autumn, when there are no leaves on trees, the sky is very clear and blue, free from clouds. At that time when sun rises, you can see every object within your sight, every object, very clearly. Similarly, when we practice anicca sanya, perception of impermanence, everything we see is changing, appearing, disappearing, Everything is impermanent. That is the best kind of meditation for us to liberate our ourselves from greed, hatred, and delusion. In fact, it is so important. Anicca sanya is so important. You see, Anapana Satisutta at the end, the last tetrad says, Anicca Anupasi Asisi Swami Srikati. Anicca anupasi pasya sissami sikati. Viraga anupasi sissami it bit sikati. Viraga anupasi pasya sissami. Niroda anupasi sissami sikati. Niroda anupasi pasya sissami. Patini sagga anupasi sissami sikati. Patini sagga anupasi pasya sissami. In all this we can see impermanence. Beginning with the word impermanence itself. Satipatta anusutta. Every section ends Samudaya Dhamma Anupasiva Kaasmi, Vaya Dhamma Anupasiva Kaasmi Vyarati, Samudaya Vaya Dhamma Anupasiva. Vedana, mental state and Dhamma, all mind objects. We see rising nature, Vaya Dhamma, Samudaya Dhamma, rising nature, Vaya Dhamma, falling nature, Samudaya Vaya Dhamma, rising and falling nature, this is the nature of conditioned thing, Sankara. Sankara has three characteristics. Buddha said in Sanghita Nikaya, Sankara uh, Upado Panyayati, Vai Panyayati, Titasa Anyatatang Panyayati. You see, rising you can see, falling you can see, rising and falling you can see. Rising and falling is the alteration of what we call existence. Even existence is not something fixed. Existence also is going on, altering, changing, 
uh, uh, every every moment, and therefore, that's the nature of sankara, uh, as we discuss in our dependent origination early discourses, early talks. I mention, uh, I define sankara, and dependent origination also is another. My theme of this series of talk is dependent origination, and what we are mentioning except today, I mentioned the significance of today, uh, this full moon day. Besides that, all other talks are on dependent origination. In the dependent origination, what we see very clearly is impermanence, because every factor of dependent origination is arising and passing away. The, the formula itself says, it must mean sati idangoti. When you hear when this is, this is. When you hear the word when, that, that implies the time. When we talk about time, time is not something fixed. <laughs> time is always happening. You look at the time, uh, 11 o'clock. Next second, 11, one second. 11, 10, seven, 2 seconds. Time mo this machine is a very good reminder of impermanence. This clock machine is a very good reminder of impermanence, of time. Time. Whenever we say uh, independent origination, this being, this is. This is not, this is not. This not being, this is not. By uh, this disappears, this disappears. This passes away, this passes away. We repeat the impermanence in different words, independent origination. Every fact of dependent origination is impermanent. So, looking at them exactly like this is called investigation of Dhamma. Only through that kind of investigation of Dhamma can we liberate our mind from suffering. Friends, uh, thank you very much for participating. I had to wind down this morning's uh, session, uh, some of which I mentioned this morning are uh, repetitions, and yet repetition also is extremely important for us to remember things. Uh, therefore, uh, this repetition is very important. Now, friends, we started our meditation with metta and did the mindfulness insight meditation and listened to a uh, talk on uh, impermanence and investigation of Dhamma. Uh, we, we did all these things with one uh, purpose in mind, that is to liberate uh, especially to uh, invoke blessings upon those who are suffering from this uh, COVID-19 and we want them to be free from this uh, suffering, return to normal health and live long in very good health. There are others, as I mention every day, who are lamenting, grieving, the death of their loved ones, relatives, friends, and so forth, millions of them all over the world. And then we want to send our metta to people like doctors, nurses, hospital staffs, and those facilitators uh, who take care of these patients with very dedicated attitude compassion, wisdom, understanding, and, dead, uh, and selfless, selflessly. And may they continue their very wonderful service in good health. There are many people who are doing financial supports to help these people. We want to wish them to, con uh, wish them to, be, uh, continue, to continue their generosity and uh, selfless service. And there are many leaders who have done wonderful service to curtail, uh, curb this uh, 
uh, COVID-19 and out of compassion and understanding. And as a result, uh, some uh, countries now are uh, returning to their normal activities, uh, even opening schools. And there are some other leaders who have not been that wise and compassionate, uh, may be not understanding the truth, and we want them to be wise, may them to be understanding, have compassion, and uh, be wise to make right, wise decision for the benefit of all these suffering beings. With this uh, benediction, I so to say, I want to end this morning's session and thank you very much for participating in this morning's session. Okay. Thank you.